Hey, what's going on, guys? So first off, I just want to apologize for my voice. It's a little raspy. I've been sick lately, but uh, I'm going to make this quick. I just wanted to talk a little bit about JavaScript frameworks and the, I guess, the the complaining about the number of frameworks, the, the, the people that are overwhelmed by JavaScript frameworks and so on, and kind of give you uh, an alternate way of, of thinking about it. Because, yes, there's a lot of stuff we have to learn as web developers, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, frameworks, libraries, Git, text editors. There's, there's a lot of shit to learn, and there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, but when it comes to frameworks, you don't have to learn all of them, and, and a lot of people think that you do. Um, I just did a video on Feathers.js last week, and there were so many comments that were like, oh, another framework I have to learn. Feathers is... is is not something you have to learn. It's geared towards real-time APIs and real-time applications, and you actually use it with Express. So it's a tool, and that's that's what I would encourage you guys to look at this stuff as, are tools that are available to you to make things easier for you to build things that maybe you couldn't build before. But I want to start off with just the front end. Um, so when you're learning front-end JavaScript, the most important thing is the, the fundamentals, it, JavaScript itself, the language, um, the methods, working with the DOM, learning the, the APIs of the browser. That stuff is, is really, really important, way more important than which framework you choose. Because if you know, if you're really good with JavaScript, it doesn't really matter what framework you choose. You're going to catch on to it really quickly. Um, so that's definitely the most important uh, and doing algorithms, challenges, stuff like that, building projects with no framework, that's that's great practice. Now, when you do choose a framework, if, if you were a developer seven years ago or around that time, then you remember the amount of frameworks that we had, uh, you know, Ember, Backbone, AngularJS, uh, Knockout. There were so many, and none of them were really established. So we didn't really know what was going to last everyone was scared to use a framework because we didn't know if it was just going to disappear the next day and stop being supported and so on but now you really have three really big frameworks that are not going anywhere which are uh, react Vue, and angular so it's much better than it used to be and i know it might not seem like that to people that are kind of just getting into this but it was it was way worse before uh, now, when it comes to these three frameworks, you just you just need to choose one, choose one ecosystem and, and, and run with it. Now, in the learning phase, you might work with all three just to see what works for you. That's what I would suggest is build some projects with all three. And usually one will stick out, one will you'll kind of click with more than the others. And that's probably the one you should go with. You can also factor in like jobs in, in your area. Are there more React jobs, Vue jobs, whatever? You can use that um, to choose as well, but generally you want to choose the one that you work best with. Um, and then just learn that ecosystem, React Redux, Vue, Vuex, uh, Angular, NGRX, and then maybe like a UI library like Material UI, uh, Vuetify. You want to learn just that whole ecosystem and, and try to master that rather than just trying to work with all three. Now, if, you, if you're a React developer and you're, you, you get really good at it, even if you get offered a job with, that uses Vue on the front end, you're going to pick it up quickly because all three do the same thing. They all build single-page applications. So if you learn one, it's really easy to, to learn the other. It's just a it's different structure, it's different syntax, but it's the same idea. You know, you have routes on the front end and, um, you know, some have kind of a different design pattern like Angular is more MVC, but it's you, you'll be able to pick it up pretty easily. So just focus on one and don't worry about the others. Um, you know, maybe do some others for fun. If you're a React developer, maybe you want to just build something in Vue on your, you know, for a side project. That's that's fine. But specialize in one. Now, when it comes to the back end, again, fundamentals are very important. In addition to just JavaScript, you want to learn, um, you know, HTTP. You want to learn all the status codes, the methods, um, the, the principles of like a REST API. Um, you want to learn that stuff, the whole request response cycle, because that's all the same. No matter what framework you choose, that's going to, or even language that you choose, that's all going to be the same. 
Uh, as far as frameworks, Express kind of rules the JavaScript server-side frameworks, and JavaScript, I'm sorry, Express is, uh, is pretty low level, so you can build things how you want, uh, but there's not that much included. And you have some other frameworks that are similar, like HappyJS, Koa, uh, and if you know Express, you'll be able to pick those up like nothing. It's, it's, they're basically the same thing, just minor differences in the syntax, middleware, all works the same and everything. So I would definitely suggest Express if you want something low level. If you want a higher level framework, you have like Adonis, um, Nest.js. If you like TypeScript, you might want to look at Nest. If you're an Angular developer, you might want to look at Nest. But these frameworks give you extra utilities, um, migrations and built-in authentication, stuff like that. So you might want to just compare and contrast low level versus high level. High level can be really good for uh, freelancers because they're good for rapid development because when you're a freelancer, you need to get things out really quickly and express, you know, it takes a, a, a bit longer to do things because you basically have to do it all either custom or with third party packages, whereas a high level framework, you have all that stuff included. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not that it's not that overwhelming. It really isn't. And I know that. There's a lot of like YouTubers and influencers out there that will feed into that negativity and try to make you feel overwhelmed just so they can get views. And I find that really just, um, I don't know, really irresponsible because a lot of people look up, up to us for advice and, you know, what to learn and what to do. And I think that as as content creators and influencers, it's it's our job to really help people and push them in a positive direction rather than a negative direction, just so we can get views and and get you know people like yeah fuck JavaScript or fuck React or whatever. Um, I just find that really disappointing, and I'm seeing a lot of that lately. And I'm not talking about any specific channel or influencer. I know whenever I mention something like this, people are like, "Oh, I know who you're talking about." It's I don't, I'm not talking about a specific person. Um, there's there's quite a few, uh, and it's not just this industry. It's everywhere. It's horrible in politics. I mean, people just want to monetize other people's frustration and uh, them being confused and overwhelmed and I just I, I hate that you know I want you guys to succeed I want to push you in a positive direction without being naive I'm not trying to, to make you naive and think everything is flowers and candy and everything is easy being a developer is not easy whatsoever um, in fact it's I think it's one of the hardest professions just because you have to you have to be dedicated you have to be passionate about it or you're not going to make it unless you're just a genius that picks things up really quickly. And, you know, unless you're some kind of genius, you're going to have to bust your ass if this is what you want to do. And I'm not going to tell you otherwise. But um, at the same time, you don't want to look at everything through a doom and gloom lens. You know, you want to feel good about your future, feel good about what you're learning and, um, you know, think, think positive and and don't don't feed into other people's negativity because you'll read online you know oh react sucks this sucks and don't don't feed into that be your own person think in, think in your own way experience things for yourself rather than listening to other people but i think that's it guys uh, my throat's killing me so i can't go much longer but uh thanks for watching and i will see you next time